What do we have here? Time for a tech tip. Look at all those lights. What's going on? It's winter. It's cold outside. Boat owners are turning on electric heaters and just continuous AC loads. Wondering why we catch boats on fire? Oh, wish you could smell this. We have burned up hull inlets, shore power cords. I have boxes of this stuff in the lab. Why? Well, has to do with this hull inlet and corrosion. Let's take a peek. Before we dig into the tech tip too much, let's get down here on the docks and look for some hot hull inlets. So it's cold, beautiful day, but cold. 26 degrees, got the hat on. We're going to take and use some of our favorite equipment here and show you how to check your boat or a marina to make sure that you are not going to um, be having trouble catching boats on fire. Art just came back up Saturday, a couple days ago, and checked another boat. Some live aboard friends lost power, tried to sort out why it was easy. The hull inlet. You got two things that normally happen. You could lose power when you have a problem with, you know, with corrosion, or what we really don't want to have happen, that's the good event, is lose power, is to actually catch a boat on fire. So one of my favorite tools is this thermal image camera right here by FLIR. Uh, we can use that to check our lots of electrical issues but for sure this one and then if at a minimum 20 bucks little infrared you can point and shoot at hull inlet so preventative maintenance on a boat is making sure that our stuff is is in good shape so let's check a few boats and see if we can find any warm ones today from that continuous heater running then we'll go back to the lab and uh, dive deep into to why this happens and a little bit more. Okay, well, some nice boats down here. Didn't find anything amiss, but it happens. It's a thing, so we need to check on it. I should have gotten Art to film that short park quarter your place this weekend, but let's go back to the shop and talk about what we find. I'll show you some images of other boats and dive deep. How do we check these? <laughs> First of all, let's shut off some of this lights and some of this load. Okay, how we check this stuff is with our thermal image camera. And I'll get into the different cameras later, but for this tech tip, what happens is, ever see somebody drop one of these in the ocean? Uh-huh, I have. Usually it's the other end. It's this end that gets plugged into the boat. While we're down here at the marina, and we're talking about these hull inlets that get hot and the corrosion on the shore power cord connections. And how does it happen? Well, we are in a saltwater environment, first of all, so there's just natural salt air. But every now and then, I walk down in the marina and I see like, oh, what is this? You know, here's a cord. Somebody has left their slip, unplugged the boat, and yeah, hmm. now, weird. Did it blow the breaker? No, we got a video about that. But what do they do usually? Well, this, you know, good enough. They don't have another cord. They want to get their boat plugged in or whatever, or somebody else pulls it out for them and you don't know that your cord's been down in the salt water and that's all it takes. That will, you know, quickly increase the amount of corrosion in here. And we know that corrosion over time with your shore power turned on, can overheat this cord end, your hull inlet, and subsequent we see these boat fires. So, got to be careful, got to use good equipment. Over here, and I've got a, a little split cord set up where I can tease out the black, white, and green for other troubleshooting, different tech tip, but this allows me to get just the hot wire to know what kind of amperage we're running. Before we go down on the docks and look at hull inlets to find out which boats are going to catch fire next and which marina is going to get burned up. You can figure that out ahead of time with a thermal image camera. And so <clears throat> we've established the baseline here because electrical conductors, when you pull energy through them, naturally get a little bit warmer. That's why they're rated like shore cords are 60 degrees C because they're outside of the boat. If you have cabling in an engine room, it's supposed to be 105 C is our standard, but you can derate or rate it for whatever is applicable for the amount of amperage you have. ABYC has got the tables to make sure we do that safe. The issue is when we get up here and we start shooting this 
hull inlet right where we go into the boat, that is going to get hot from that extra resistance. And we've seen boats super hot with as little as 10 amps continuous current going through them. So often boat owners in the wintertime are gonna leave something like an electric heater. Hopefully not like this, maybe a little better one. Um, but they leave electric stuff plugged in all winter when it's cold. <clears throat> and what is standard? Well, we're gonna walk around and show you how this machine, thermal image camera, any kind of thermal image, will pinpoint those troubled boats. But first of all, we need to know what is normal. And normal is, we've had this running for a couple of hours. This morning we came in, we're filming this before we get, get to our daily lesson. And in a 68 degree room, and I get right up in here, I can get maybe 90 degrees. So 20 degrees above ambient temperature. That is still normal. None of this stuff's been in salt water. There's our target from 70 up to 90 at 20 degrees ship. So when we're down in the marina, if it's 50 degrees outside and I see one of these hull inlets at 90, I know that we need to do some investigation. So my camera battery is dead, but here we are out in Skyline on a different occasion and we were checking boats. Probably a 40 degree day, it was cold. We're walking around, see this Grand Banks and sure enough, we get to the hull inlet and we see some increase in temperature. Not unusual. This is why we think that uh, operators of marinas and your staff, boat owners, yacht clubs, invest in a camera, walk around and, and see what is up because the images are spectacular. I mean, they're just, they make it so easy to diagnose this particular problem and find out which boat is gonna catch on fire next. There it was, you could see the really bright image. Uh, that's, that's why we like the thermal cameras more than just a little infrared point and shoot. Now, it costs with a, a price tag of about 20X, but you could see that elevated temperature is only 60 degrees, but we unplug that cord and notice it looks perfect, right? The boat owner would assume nothing is wrong at this particular point, it's a 50 amp service, uh, 240 volt. And you just hit your camera on top of that and this is hitting 120 degrees maximum. That's where it's gonna start melting and you're either gonna catch the boat on fire or you're gonna lose shore power and we don't want boats catching fire. On the hull inlet, same thing, uh, a little cooler because as time goes on of taking pictures, but still well into 100 degrees, 60 degrees above. If you look, you can see a little bit of corrosion on the bottom of that um, hull inlet right there, and that's the start of it. So what do you do at this point? You buy a new cord set and you replace the hull inlet as a pair. And then you're gonna get another five plus years or more out of this uh, system. As long as you don't drop it in the water like I showed you the cord I found earlier just laying in, in, the, in the drink. So let's go back to the shop. I just finished at the Northwest Marina Conference, uh, part of the Northwest Marine Trades, great organization. They wanted me to put this out so that people running marinas can walk around and check out if boats are safe. Your yacht club should have a thermal image machine. Everybody should check their boats annually to find out, do you have trouble with your shore power cord? Is it getting corroded, nasty, does it need to be replaced? Okay, we're about 20 minutes in, and as suspected, this old connector with the rusty bolts and stuff that I knew was a little suspect, we'll take it apart here in a minute, is already heating itself up, and we get some glare in here, but, um, Essentially, you can see if we hit the hot spots that we're hitting 100 degrees, okay, right on the, on the screw, and only 11.4 amps, so well below the threshold of the OCP. This is just why those boats that we saw down on the dock will eventually, sooner or later, there's always somebody that catches fire on the hull inlet. It just has to do with a little bit of corrosion and constant current well below the threshold of the OCP. So we'll keep this running while we teach a couple of classes here this afternoon and see where it 
uh, stabilizes that and or get it shut off before it, it actually melts this down because we don't want to catch the lab on fire again. We just saw over there, we took this old uh, little adapter just to prove the point of low amperage will cause fires, potentially. And so this thing here, I couldn't even get these two rusty screws out. That's how I knew it was old. So we lit this thing off and with, within 20 minutes it was getting hot. Less than an hour, 130 degrees. So that's, um, we started at 70. So that was a hundred and, so that was like 85% increase. Huge, right? And you got these shore power cords are rated at 60 degrees C which is 140. That's when the plastic insulation will start to melt and fail, which can cause fires. So what does it look like? Well, on the inside, it's, uh, if you look at the end of the, this thing, it looked totally fine, I don't, you know. And so why is it getting hot? Well, it has to do with just a little bit of corrosion. A little bit of resistance, a little bit of corrosion causes all sorts of extra heat and so let's see if I can get this thing apart without damaging it ah, there we go oh beauteous so look at what's inside these are the little the little pinchers right here that grab on that your short cord goes into and look at all that tarnishing it's not a ton it's not terrible but it's enough you know we have to have a removable connection and removable connections are you know, they don't last forever. They're not that, you know. So be aware. Keep an eye out. Uh, check on your boat. And if it's starting to get hot at all or show any kind of signs of corrosion starting, time to replace your equipment. Keep your boat safe. We don't want any fires.